What's up everyone, it's Nicish and welcome to another Rust Pro Series video. Uh, today we're talking about automatic lights. Uh, I'm gonna show you two versions of this, the passive and active versions I'm calling them, uh, and I'll explain that as we go. So let's just get started with the passive. And what I mean by the passive is that this system is independent of any power, other power system you have in your base. So if you have a large battery, say running your base, uh, this is independent of that and it only is here for lights. And so for this first one, I'm just gonna kind of wire this up and then we'll talk about it. Uh, so from a solar panel specifically, you're going to uh, run that to the input on a, the power in on a branch switch, just like this. Uh, you're gonna run the branch out. That's gonna run over to the block pass through on a blocker like Let's see if we can get close, there we go, like so. And then the power out of that branch is gonna run to the uh, charging input on your car battery. Uh, and then the output of that car battery is gonna run over to the power in on your blocker. And the power out of that blocker is gonna run to your string of lights uh, in your base, just like this. Okay, and there we go. And so. Beyond that, that's all you have to do. You do not have to do anything with the branch um, because of the way this works. And so I'm gonna explain how this works and I'll show you over here how you can you know, up the battery size. Uh, you know, Normally in, when you're doing rust batteries, you have to consider the charging efficiency, the 80% charging efficiency. You can see my battery or my video on batteries, excuse me. Uh, but in this system, you don't because for a passive system, this only serves to, to run the lights. And in this case, I have four lights, so that's eight. Uh, you could technically run, uh, run five lights if you didn't use the, the blocker. But for this system, the max on a small car battery is gonna be four lights. Uh, and the way it works is that during the day, the solar panel is putting out its voltage. And so that voltage is running to this uh, branch. Two of it is forced out to keep the blocker blocked, which cuts the battery off from the lights, which, and if you don't know, a blocker that's blocked, that's the first thing connected after a battery, it's going to, you can see there, the active usage says zero. And that's how this works, is that during the day, this battery is essentially hooked to nothing, which means it can charge very quickly. Um, batteries that have no active usage, ergo no components hooked to them, charge very quickly. And so you can overcome that charging efficiency rule by cutting the battery off during the day. And then what will happen is the solar panel at night will of course be shaded or the sun will go down and, and it stops putting out power. And once you, re you get to one volt here, then you have nothing else because this is gonna eat a volt. So once this thing's putting out just a volt or less, it's gonna release this branch out, which is going to release the blocker, which is gonna send, send voltage to your lights. And we can simulate that by simply unhooking the solar panel uh, to simulate you know, loss of light. So if I unhook this, there we go. The lights have just turned on because this blocker is now allowing voltage to pass through. And, and you know, there you go, and that's it. And these will stay on all night until they get at least two volts from this. So if I were to hook this back up, uh, what'll happen is I'm going to re-block the blocker and turn the lights off, there you go. And so the charging aspect of this is that since the branch, uh, branch out gets priority, it's always gonna send out to whatever, you know, if it gets down to two or less, that's all that'll come out. And so this power out is, is charging the battery um, during the day. And so this currently is 17 um, and that'll slowly trickle down. But for a car battery, you know, that's gonna keep this thing charged all the time. So that is sort of the set, the essence of a passive. You know, if you wanna up this, you can scale this up. Here I have a medium battery. Uh, this is the same exact build, except that I have two solar panels now. Um, and you don't necessarily, you might not even need two solar panels. It depends on how much stuff you hook up to this, but you have 50 watts available. So, you know, you could do up to 49 things after the 49 volts worth of things after the blocker. Uh, but the installation is, is exactly the same. I have, I have two solar panels, so I ran them to a root combiner to bring them together into one output this single output is you know that line we did over there and then that's going to run to the branch just like it did before the branch out also runs to the block pass through and the power out is going to run to the input the power in on your battery you're charging and then the the power out of your battery is going to again run to the power into the blocker its output is then going to run to your string of lights and here i've got what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen lights so 28 28 volts worth of lights again this is passive so you don't have to keep track of 
You're not setting the the, the branch to anything. It just stays in its, its default configuration. And this battery is just gonna, once it's released, you know, once these no longer are getting sunlight, it's gonna release this blocker and it's just gonna send its full voltage. And that's kind of what happens with these passive. Whatever the battery is, this is gonna send all 50 if, if it could, if it can power stuff, uh, and a large battery would send all 100. Um, and so again, this this overcomes the charging efficiency rule. If I if I go ahead and just cut this out, in fact, yeah, we'll just cut this out. You'll see the lights all turn on. There we go. And so this is currently getting all 50, right? And then you have 49 coming out of here. So you have 49 stuff, you know, volts to play with post this blocker. And so if I were to hook this back up, um, it will simply. Uh, cut right back off again. This is going to simulate sun coming back in. There you go. Now they're off and the battery is once again charging and it once again importantly has an active usage of zero. So that is passive and the way you would use this is you would just set up a battery for your base that's only for lights. This is the whole point of it. Uh, so okay, so now we're going to talk about active auto lights and this is your it's good. It's kind of the same but, but, it, but it's different in that the battery is going to constantly register the active features, and I'll talk about that right now. Um, so the way this works is that, let's say you have uh, some power system set up here. I have this uh, power bank. You can see my video on that if you're curious about what this is. I've got this power bank, and I've sent off, what, 160 to this battery. I've got floating 37 volts uh, right now because I've got wind and solar right now during the day anyway. Uh, and so this is my base, right? This is my actual power for my base. It's not just for lights, it's for uh, it's for anything. And so by active auto lights, what we're gonna do is I'm going to just build in an auto light circuit to my existing base. And so the way you do that is from a branch, I'll put this up here. Um, I'm just gonna put this branch here as a demonstration. Um, you know, some of you have seen my videos about the power tree, but this would be say, you know, if you had a power tree going in your base, like so, I'm gonna use this branch out here for auto lights, and then this branch out would be for turrets or whatever else you're building. So, uh, and this is the most current power output, the last branch in your chain. So I'm going to just hook this up, and what I'll do is I'm gonna run the branch out into the blocker. Uh, the blocker, just like before, is gonna run straight over to the lights, like so. And you're gonna have to just set this branch to whatever you have. So we have two, four, six volts in lights, seven if you include the blocker. So I'll set this to seven. And by doing this, and so all my lights came on, by doing this, uh, you'll notice that the battery now has an active usage of nine. And it's gonna have that active usage of nine regardless of whether or not these lights are on or not because I've set this branch to seven. So seven, right, and this particular one and the two coming, this one, they're all accounted for. And so it's constantly active on your battery. It doesn't go away like those do. So you do have to charge this battery based on the charging rule, which is why I've got 160 going to it. So 125 or more. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the solar panel, but in a different way. So this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this solar panel uh, to the block pass-through, but this time, this solar panel has nothing to do with charging. Its entire job is to just block this, to send voltage out. Right now it's daytime, so it's sitting out 20, but to block this blocker. And so what this is really, whereas these ones, these ones were, were charging, they were charging the batteries when they were on active usage zero, so they charged them really fast. This one is essentially a light sensor. It's not charging anything. It is simply there to to sense whether or not there's light and therefore block off this, this blocker. Could you partition off power? Sure, that's, but that's not the, uh, the you know, purpose of this video. So the it's here to just block this blocker to keep these lights off during the day. So once it gets dark, you could, right, I'll simulate this, there you go. It's no longer sending voltage here and the lights come on. And so that's it, that's how it works. You can, now there's some fundamental differences here. Um, this design, um, based on how it's built, is going to turn off the lights later because these ones, because of this branch here, are gonna turn off at one volt output from here. When this is one, they turn off. Here, it has to actually be zero. And so it's pretty dark when this is already zero. So there's things you can do. Uh, for instance, one thing you could do is, and this is arbitrary, I'm just gonna use branch switches, or I'm sorry, blockers just because I have them. You could say, put a couple of blockers in this path and the whole purpose here, this could be any switch. I mean, the blocker is just easy, whatever you got. Um, that's not a branch, I would say. And what you can do is you can set up 
uh, switches to eat volts. So this is gonna eat a couple of volts on the way, which means now, you know, now this is gonna turn off, it's gonna turn these lights on earlier uh, because you've put these volts in, you know, once it's a one, two, so you're gonna have to have one coming out of here, right? So it's gonna be what, about three? And so the point is, is that the more switches you add in, the earlier it'll turn the lights on, but that also means that it's going to turn the lights off later. So it depends what you want. Um, you can also, if you don't wanna mess with putting switches into it, um, you could also just uh, install this in such a way that you get shade on it earlier. So if you, you know, you can purposely put it to where when the sun, you know, sets in the west, you have something to the right, you know, to the right of this or whatever that that puts some shade on it early. That's exactly what happens over here, actually. The sign is shading that one, so it's popping it off early. But the point is, you can strategically place this in a way where it's going to get shaded so that your lights come on at whatever time it is you want them to come on. But then they'll turn off at the normal time because the sun comes up in the east. And if you don't have any shade on the east side, they'll turn off immediately at daybreak. So um, that's pretty much it, actually. That's that's all you gotta know. Um, the, I guess the last thing is, you could, if you wanted, in this system, if you really wanted the ability to turn the lights off for some reason, maybe to you know make someone think you're not home or whatever, uh, you could run a switch by just inserting a switch into this loop and then increase this output to one to eight, one by one, and so now you have a switch. You leave it on, and when the when the you know when you lose power because of your sensor, it'll turn the lights on. But you still have this ability to turn them off if that's something that you so desire. Um, so that, you know, connect this back up. And that, folks, is about all I've got. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Otherwise, you can get me on my Discord. See you later.